guys coming at you from the car because we're about to run some errands but I thought it'd be cool to do one of these videos of like a party planning and prep for my son's first birthday his birthday is actually on Sunday and it's Tuesday right now <laughs> so I'm a little I'm pushing it a little bit so it's really gonna be a simplified version but I thought it'd be cool to share in case you're looking to do a similar theme uh, maybe get some ideas get inspired we just ordered a couple things off Amazon that is like a bear type of theme because that's what we're going with I thought that'd be cute and pretty simple and I hopefully can find things <laughs> in that theme like it's not too niche you know what I mean although sometimes it's hard to find like cute bear things not like tacky looking not that there's anything wrong with that that's totally fine but I don't know I like a little more minimal type of look so anyway we're gonna see what we find I'm gonna go to Hobby Lobby right now and just take a look around I need to find also where I can maybe pick up some cupcakes if you're new here I am a first-time mom so I have one son so I am kind of new to making these kind of like motherhood slash homemaking type of content but I do also make some fashion related videos as well so yeah if that sounds like something that you're interested in be sure to subscribe and let's get on with the planning all right so first step is getting everything out of my brain and onto paper it just really helps to process it all out and plan out what I need to do and when here I'm just planning out my week overall I'm using this weekly planning pad that I actually found at Target so we'll be doing a little shopping and I'll show you the things that I have found for the party. Decorating, of course, and doing some cooking too. Which I'll put timestamps below if you're interested in a particular part and I will try to link as many of the items, especially the ones from Amazon. Okay, that was a little bit of a fail. There didn't really have much, which I kind of expected. I did get, however, like this black and white check and then a little leaf plate and they were 50% off. The only other thing I got were like these gold chocolate ball things. <laughs> I thought I could use that to decorate and put on top of the cupcakes. Okay, so two things from Amazon arrived today and then I was also able to go to Michael's. So the things from Amazon that came include this like balloon kit. It has like balloon tape and stuff so you can make an arch. Hopefully we'll see how that goes. And then I did also get these. These are actually like cupcake wrappers, you know, decorative little things that you can wrap around the base of the cupcakes. These little like cocktail skewer things I thought were so cute. They've got a little bear heads on the top. This is a pack of a lot but I'm planning on using this to kind of like stick on top of the cupcakes as a decoration but then also they can be used for like the fruit and whatever else I guess people want them for. So I'll put them on the side as well but those are so cute. So a couple more things from Amazon are coming and I did also get this. This was from Target actually. Electric balloon pump thing so that I don't have to blow up all of these because that would just take forever. So hopefully this is as good as I'm hoping it is. And then while I was at Target I of course had to get one of these little balloons as well. And then for Michael's I got these like melty thingies. I'm planning on making like a little personal little cake for Bennett to like attack <laughs> and I want to decorate it like a little bear. This is kind of like my inspo. Hopefully this is not one of those like Pinterest versus reality type of things and we'll see how that turns out but I figured I could maybe use this to make the nose and eyes and things like that. I don't know this is gonna be a test and we'll see how that goes. I got this little cake board thing there's actually three in here I think but I only need one maybe I'll use some for the cupcakes I don't know. I got these little treat bags for like some snack mix and I'm gonna put them in they're kind of like the party favors as well. And then I also got some twist ties, but I didn't even realize that it already came with them. And then last thing I got were two boxes of these Whoppers. I was actually gonna look for them at the grocery store, but then I was like, hmm, what if I can't find them there? And these just happen to be in the line, like when you go to check out. So I picked them up. I wanted to use these to put on top of the cupcakes. I went ahead and ordered two dozen cupcakes from a local bakery and I figured I just have them plain and then I'll just decorate them. So yeah, that's everything that I was able to pick up. So tomorrow and Friday will be all the cleaning and basically just kind of like decorating and getting all that set. Because on Sunday we're going to church and I'm not going to have time to do anything. So I want to get everything done within the next couple days. 
So I'm keeping the decor pretty simple and I tried to use a lot of what I already had, but I felt like it still looked really cute. I wanted to make a little photo display and so I started printing out some photos of my son from each month of his first year of life. And I feel like this is such a cute way to show just like how much I've grown. We have this like Kodak photo printer, which I think was from Amazon, which I'll link that for you if you're interested. I'm sure there's several other brands who make something similar, like I know Canon has one too, but you can also just like take them to CVS or Walgreens and have them print it there or just like print them on regular paper too. I just really like this because they come out looking like Polaroids and this frame that I'm putting them into is actually a Goodwill find though I think it's originally from Hobby Lobby. You can use multiple frames if you don't have a big one. There's always so many at thrift stores or you can use mini clothespins and hang them on some twine or string or something like that. That would be really cute too. And then of course I had to break out my letter board for the occasion. I couldn't not, you know. So I'm gonna wrap some faux presents with just some brown paper bags that I already have and wrap them over some boxes. And then I have a couple like ribbon things that I just had in my stash. So let's we'll see if I can make something cute out of those. I keep a little stash of brown paper bags rather than recycling them right away because I love repurposing them as gift wrap. It has such a, like a rustic, cozy feel to me, especially when you wrap string or ribbon around it or even some greenery if you really want to get fancy. It's pretty simple. You just cut the bag open so it lays flat in like one big rectangle then you just remove the handles and then use it like you would any other wrapping paper. Here I just wrapped some empty boxes I had just to make these for decoration. I mean, he's only one so he's not going to know what they are even, so not a big deal. banners I got from Amazon as well. It actually came with a one banner too, which was a happy surprise. I didn't know that that was included. This is one of those things that you could probably DIY as well, but I just wanted to buy a pre-made one. So I just taped the string to the wall, but I tied little loops at the ends because I felt like it looked a little weird and unfinished without it. So you know, it just gives it a little bit of an extra something. <laughs> So all the food will be set up on this buffet table. So I put the paper plates at the end and then used a couple glass jars I had for the utensils and the adorable little cocktail skewers. Glass jars are another thing that I like to keep a stash of for repurposing for things like food storage or crafts or basically whatever else you could use them for. Oh, and the bear napkins were from Amazon also. Okay, this is the easiest snack mix slash party favors and I feel like it fits the theme perfectly. I saw it on Pinterest when I was looking for some inspo, uh, but it's like a s'mores snack mix. It's literally just throwing together Teddy Grahams, mini marshmallows, and chocolate chips, which I use the semi-sweet chunks actually. I ended up making it in two batches, but I'd use two boxes of Teddy Grahams and then one bag each of the marshmallows and chocolate chunks. So pretty much all of the decor is done except for the balloon arch, which we will get to. The only other things I'll be adding in include a cake stand for the smash cake, teddy bears, you know, that we already have, and a wooden bee from his nursery decor. So now we are moving on to the cooking. I did all of the prep and cooking the day before, so that'll be ready to go. We ended up going for barbecues, so my husband took care of the brisket and the ribs. So for sides, I made potato salad, mac and cheese, uh, just a garden salad, and corn. So get ready for some multitasking here to get it all done. My favorite way to cook the potatoes for potato salad is actually in the instant pot. The time will vary based on how big your potatoes are, but I cut some of the bigger ones so that they were the same size as the smaller ones that I had. Just place them in the pot with the trivet and like a cup of water or so and cook it on manual high pressure for 11 or 12 minutes. I think I could have done 10 or 11 minutes for these smaller potatoes, but once it's done, let the pressure release naturally for 10 minutes and then quick release the rest of the way. As they cooked, I chopped the onions and the dill pickles so that they were ready to go for the potato salad. Thank you. 
plan to assemble the garden salad on the day of, but to make it extra quick, I prepped the veg to be added to the lettuce and stored it in a Tupperware container. So this salad had grape tomatoes, cucumber, and red onion, and then I got some Italian dressing for it. Very simple. At this point, the potatoes were done, so I took those out and put them on a cutting board to cool. So moving on to the mac and cheese, which I also used the instant pot. And let me tell you guys, like as soon as I learned I could cook this kind of pasta in an instant pot, my life was changed forever and I will never go back. It was so easy and quick. Like you don't have to wait for the water to boil. You don't have to stir it while it's cooking. Like there's no draining involved. Like it's really a game changer. I'll link the Food Network article that I learned it from. This is just for short pasta variety and it's probably gonna be different for pasta alternatives but for 16 ounces of dry pasta I added about four cups of water and a teaspoon of salt stir it up and just make sure all of the dry pasta is submerged and then you cook it on high pressure for five minutes literally five minutes and then once it's done quick release it and then you just stir it and now this way that I'm gonna make the mac and cheese is kind of like a cheat way. It's really like a very simplified version. I actually used cream cheese, probably like about a quarter to a third of a cup, along with some milk. Uh, this is in place of like a typical roux. And then I literally just melted in some white American cheese. I think I ended up using about four slices. Of course, it would have been even better if I had some cheddar or something to add to it, but I didn't have any. And then I just seasoned it with salt to taste as well as a little bit of garlic powder because garlic is life. Once the potatoes cooled fully, I cubed them up and threw them in the dish with the prepped onions and pickles. I seasoned the potatoes with salt and garlic powder, and then I poured in some pickle juice, which is like the secret ingredient, and then of course, mayo and a little Dijon mustard. So in between some of the food prep, I had started on this mashed cake for my son also. I ended up making this like banana oat cake, which was basically like a baked oatmeal. I'll put the link to the recipe that I use in the description box. And then I doubled the recipe after I had poured it into my 9 by 13 pan because it just wasn't enough. But that was purely because I wanted to be able to cut out three tiers from this cake in order to kind of have a little bit of height. I lined the pan with parchment paper so that it was easy to lift the cake out to cool on a rack once it was done. If you have a small cake pan, you can use that of course, but I didn't want to buy a separate pan for this. So I just used a bowl that was about four inches in diameter as like a template. I was able to get two full circles and then I pieced a third layer together with what was left, which is totally fine for like a middle layer of the cake. So for the decorations, per the inspo pick, if you remember, I decided to try spreading out a layer of the meltables onto parchment paper and then cutting out circles for the nose and ears. So I melted it in a double boiler, but you can use a microwave also following the instructions on the package. The peanut butter flavor or the tan color was for the nose and like the mouth piece and the inner circles for the ears. And then I mixed some of the dark chocolate candy melts with the peanut butter melts to make a darker brown for the outer circle of the ears. Once it cooled and set, I just used what I could find as like a circle template. You want a bigger circle and then a smaller one. I think you'd also draw circles on parchment or cardboard or something and cut them out as a template too or you could use a piping bag or something to pipe circles onto parchment which in hindsight I think might have been easier but this is kind of how I ended up doing it. I did use a ziploc bag as a piping bag for the eyes and drawing the nose directly on the tan oval thing. Now for the ears I just went ahead and used that same dark chocolate to stick the two circles together kind of like <laughs> acting as glue and then you want to make sure that the clean flat faces of the circles are facing up and then I sandwiched two toothpicks in between so that the ears could be like just stuck into the cake standing up. If you saw here I tried piping a mouth maybe but I didn't really like how they were looking so I scrapped that idea in case you were wondering what that was. Now for the frosting I just winged it and I didn't use a recipe but I knew I wanted to 
do like a whipped cream and cream cheese combo to give it a little more structure and I knew that I wanted to make one that wasn't super sugary. I sweetened it just a little bit with a splash of maple syrup. For the cream cheese, I bought the whipped kind to make it really easy to incorporate into the whipped cream and it worked awesomely. All right, now for any bakers out there, don't come for me. I did my best with frosting the cake. You can see how I pieced a middle tier together with whatever I had, which looking back at this footage, it wasn't really even, but oh well. The frosting layers in between held it all together and you would never know. I did a crumb coat first and then went around with more frosting all over and I tried to scrape it as smooth as possible with a bench scraper. Two tools I probably should have just picked up are a turntable and an offset spatula to make the whole process easier. Then all you need to do is stick the nose and the eyes on and stick the ears into it. It looked a little bit rustic, but you know, I think it turned out cute anyway. Oh, and stay tuned to the end for how my son handled this. I also set out all of the serveware and placed it on the buffet ahead of time too so that it was ready to go and I wouldn't have to go searching for it the day of. Just a little tip for y'all. The only decor that was left was the balloon arch which I probably shouldn't have left until the night before because I was so tired by this point and almost didn't do it. But I'm glad I did because it wasn't too hard but it really does give a nice look. There are tutorials out there on YouTube for how to do one of these but a brief overview is to measure out the balloon tape where you want it and then tape it or tie it to two chairs so that it's easy to place the balloons. Start with the largest ones and then add in some of the medium sized ones. You don't have to have it very full at this stage because it's actually easier to hang it up when you don't. Then you secure it to the wall and then start playing around with the placement and then adding filler balloons with the balloon glue dots. Again, going from bigger to smaller. On the day of the party, I picked up the cupcakes that I ordered, just a chocolate cupcake with white frosting, but to zhuzh them up, I wrapped these wood grain cupcake skirts around them, and then I poked the little bear cocktail skewer into them as well, which I actually had to cut them down because they're a little bit too long. Then I just placed a whopper on it and a couple of the gold chocolate pearls, and I feel like it was such an easy way to decorate them and really elevates the look of a plain cupcake. I really loved how everything turned out and it looked very cohesive and although it's really simple, it's really all you need. I hope it inspired you and it gave you some ideas for your next party. Happy birthday to you.